Hey everybody, it's the Drive to School Podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, the content executive for Higher Things, and I am joined today by my my good friend Michelle Bauman, the director of Why for Life. How are you? Hey, I'm good. Thanks for having me. It's exciting to be back. It's great to have you. We've missed you around. Um, it's it's biz, busy times all around. I know that we've got a, a Why for Life conference coming up here in January at the March for Life. Um, I don't know if you want to tell any tell us anything about that. Yeah, 19th to the 21st, Washington, D.C. We'll be at the Hilton in Crystal City, and registration is still open, so we would love for you to join us. Absolutely. We'll uh, we'll put a link to that in the comments if you want to check it out. That'd be a, a definite thing for uh, you to consider. Um, and it's, I guess, also Advent with Christmas looming, so um, just <laughs> right. stuff happening. Um, but but we, uh, whenever you join us, we get to talk about life issues and, and sort of uh, take a, a chance to... to well, to have a perspective that is rooted in, in a, a gospel-centered understanding of, of what life is. Um, so with Christmas on the horizon, do I think I know what we're, what we're going to do? I think so. Yeah, awesome. let's talk about the nativity. Let's talk about the life issues that Jesus uh, had to face and that Mary and Joseph had to face even before Jesus was born. So um, yeah, if you're ready, let's go. Let's do it. All right. So uh, we got a baby. Uh, he's Jesus. He's God. He is man. Um, and well, he, he gives value to life simply in the fact that God would become a fetus. Absolutely. And in doing so, he, he does sanctify and, and make every human being, every life, little as it may be, uh, holy and, and worthwhile, right? Worth, worth supporting. Um, we, we believe in the sanctity of life because God has sanctified life. God has said life is important. And it's so important um, that I'm going to send my own son as a human being, right, in the flesh, um, God and man combined in one. Um, and so, so human beings, even in their littlest forms, even uh, when they are first conceived, when they're, when fertilization occurs, um, we have a baby, a zygote, a blastocyst, a uh, fetus, um, all of these different stages, embryo, fetus, um, are, are sanctified and made holy because of, because Christ uh, was all of those things phases as well was all of those um those developmental stages of life so yeah it shapes things uh there, there's an old quote by the fathers i'm pretty sure it was tertullian who said that which christ did not assume he did not redeem um and so we we sort of have this idea that god not only became sin but he became like us in in every respect uh that that we don't have a god who remains far away from any one person, any one age group, any one kind of person, um, but, but that Christ would uh, assume the nature of, well, of a fetus. It, it, it actually speaks to the fact that this is also not just a, a value, but redeemed value, that, that the value is rooted not simply in the fact that uh, we should treasure it, but that God paid a price for it. Absolutely. And, and that value, um, that value doesn't change even after birth, right? And that value was inherent also in, in, in Mary and in Joseph and the situations that they, that they were facing, situations that are even faced today, right? We can't say that, that Jesus uh, was unplanned, right? Because it's very clear in all of scripture that God does plan uh, to send his son in the right time, uh, in the fulfillment of time, right? Um, and, and in these, in this way, he wasn't unplanned. And yet for Mary, he was unexpected, mm -hmm. uh, an unexpected gift. And, and um, we see how she receives that news, that, un, that news that she is going to receive an unexpected child. And this child will be the son of God, will be Christ himself, Emmanuel, right? And, and um, so we, we recognize, we can see that this, maybe this sense of shock, right? And wonderment, but also then um, the, the acceptance that this gift has been given to her. Uh, the, the recognition that it is a gift. And so, um, you know, we can apply that as we talk about life issues today, life issues such as unplanned or unexpected pregnancies. And I, I like that term better, unexpected rather than unplanned, because the truth is, if life came to be, God's hands were involved in it, 
right? He formed that baby. He brought together that sperm and that egg and made a new life. We see in Psalm 139 that he weaves people together. And we were woven in the depths of our, our mother's womb, uh, woven together. And so, so even if um, a life is unexpected, it was not unplanned. God, God planned that life and, uh, and God um, redeemed that life. And God wants that life to, to be uh, embraced and cared for uh, in its in its fullest ways. So we see this this unexpected pregnancy. We see Mary's rejoicing over it, but we also see Joseph, um, who is confronted with this uh, this also an unexpected mm-hmm. pregnancy and one that he didn't partake in <laughs> that he didn't he didn't create. And so we see this this uh, questioning: should he should he marry? Mary? Should he maintain that that uh, relationship and that engagement? And so we see uh, God, the son, being adopted, right? Um, from the moment that, that, that Joseph um, takes on the role of dad uh, mm-hmm. in, in Christ's life. Um, what, a, what a phenomenal picture uh, for us too, right? As we are adopted into the family of God. And so right there, we have life issues, right? Absolutely. And we have people who are genuinely struggling with it. I, I think there's there's maybe um, a, an intention, especially because it's the Christmas story. So it's almost always told to us by children in the middle of a pageant uh, to sort of downplay the, the stress, the anxiety, the fear that, that all of them had and, and how it was addressed. Uh, Mary's always sort of pictured as so incredibly serene. Um, and, and I always just got to wonder, but I, I do know that that the scriptures actually speak to how she finds her contentment, that it's not just that she thinks about the promises, but it's that she goes to people who will tell her about them. She goes to Elizabeth, who who will remind her of the promises of God. She's confronted by an, an angel, which is a messenger from God. Joseph, the same way, is, is, is spoken to by somebody who speaks on behalf of the Lord, that when we, when we deal with unexpected pregnancies, when we deal with unexpected, even terrifying pregnancies, there are, are people who are sent to us from God to actually speak the gospel to us. Your, your church should welcome this then as, as a place to, to find a, a soul that, that needs baptism, that, that needs care, and um, quite frankly, a, a mother that, that needs the same care. Uh, this is a place of, of welcome because it's where we get to see the church in action. Um, Mary, for, for whatever reason, and I, I've got kind of, I, I, I personally think she got thrown out of the house when her parents found out uh, I, because she stays with Elizabeth for, for three yeah. months and she departs right. in haste. Like she has to leave quickly. Yes. And I, um, I know what it's, what it's like to, to just be away from home uh, alone and afraid. And, and she's met by the promises of, of God through Elizabeth. There she gets to also see John the Baptist uh, alive and believing in the womb. Uh, we have so many life stories uh, all sort of slammed together and, and we, we tell it in such a neat package, but, but there's so much, uh, there, there's so much, well, sin being redeemed. There, there's so much fear being addressed by promise. And, and this is also the way of things for us, uh, these are, are at best complicated situations. But in all of it, though, we have a God who promises to speak peace. Absolutely. And and I mean, even that tra- trip there, right? It's not like she could have gotten into a car and driven to, to Elizabeth, right? That would have been a long journey, uh, one that she was doing alone as a young as a young woman, one where she was already contemplating this new reality. And you're right. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm certain she was filled with fear and, and concern and worry. Um, and then who greets her? Elizabeth and immediately uh, John, John the Baptist uh, proclaims yeah. that indeed affirms, even if she was questioning, affirms, hey, you are carrying, carrying God's own child. You are carrying uh, Christ himself. You are carrying the, 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 the redeemer who has been sent into the world. So, um, you know, this, this message, this this idea that an unborn child recognizes an, another unborn child uh, in the womb is, is really such a wonderful gift for us. Um, it, and we see that too, even with twins in the same womb, we see, we see that, that gift of recognition already. But to have this miraculous recognition between two different women, two different wombs is, um, 
is such a such a, a gift not only to her but also to all of Christendom um, to 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 hear um, John recognizes him too right John was sent into the world to be um, that to to bear witness to the light and he does it even before he is born right I mean, there. There's, there's such a great comfort, at least especially to me, uh, that faith can and does exist inside of the womb, that, that faith is not a, a thing of the intellect, it, it's not a thing of, of it's simple trust, it, it's hearing of, of God's promises, and, and the Holy Spirit working a, a trust in there in the same way that we, we know that, that children hear and, and come to trust the voice of, of their parents too. Yeah, and doesn't that give us great hope? For those of us who have experienced uh, miscarriages, for those who have uh, experienced loss in the womb, um, that you know, bringing your child to church even before your child is born yeah. gives him and her or her the opportunity to hear the word of God and to be and to be brought to that faith. Right? We know, we do know that that hearing happens in the womb and we do know that God is good and gracious and uh, even even the spoken word um, God's word even in the home the devotions those mm -hmm. sort of things the baby is there for it right the baby is hearing it absolutely so, that, yeah. what else is in the nativity that's a lot yeah so okay so well then uh, they've got to go and um, you know head to Bethlehem right so they're immediately they're refugees. Um, they are, they are, and, and they're, they've chosen to be, but still they're in a transitory state, right? They don't have a home. They get to Bethlehem and there is no home for the baby Jesus. They're staying in a, in a shelter, a makeshift home, a stable. Um, and so even then we've got, we've got a life issue um, right there, right? This, this, this transitory state, this homelessness, this refugee status, um, which then again appears um, very, you know, a few months after, after Christ is born, well, up to two years after Christ is born, we know uh, that um, the, the wise men come and they visit Christ um, in his home at this point, right? We know that a home or shelter has been found. So they visit him in his home. And yet we know that they must escape. They must flee. Um, they become refugees again because, because the king is, um, is jealous and does not want um, Christ to live. And so the, the edict goes out. We have infanticide happening um, or being called for and happening as Christ and his family are escaping as Mary and Joseph are escaping. Um, and, and, and we know Mary and Joseph, even in that, that transition time, they keep the law for Christ. They, they bring him uh, you know, to the temple. They, they do the things necessary so that um, they care for him so that he can grow up to do the work that he has been called by God to do. So there's, there's a series you know, of life issues that happen to Christ even before he is born uh, and to his parents. Um, and, and through all of that, God is working redemption for the world. God has not um, left Jesus alone, right? He has not forsaken him. And, and that brings comfort to us too, when we face hard times, when we face, when we face suffering, um, God God uh, is in the midst of that suffering. Not only has Christ experienced it, but God promises to, to work in it for our good, um, even, even um, our good unto, the, unto heaven, right? Unto that, that final day of taking us there. So, yeah. It, it's a comfort to, to know that these things had happened where God works salvation, because it, it gives us a picture then of, of what we can expect until the last great day. Uh, sadly more of the same um and that that on, on one hand seems heartbreaking and another terrifying because we're, we're going to live in a world that that is well sinful it, it, it crushes even the least of these 
but we also have a God who has already redeemed them, who, who has already died it, that they would live. And, and we have a gospel that, that extends into the, all the world for people who, who struggle not only with, with these things at hand, but the guilt from, from the aftershock of them. We have a, a life to rescue the, the least of these in, in the midst of, of what's going on. And, and more, we, we actually have the freedom to just love each other in the middle of it instead of make it ours to, to always have to fix everything. Jesus didn't fix what Herod was doing, but, but he saved all of all of those children who were lost by his death upon the cross that still applies today yeah and i think it's you know so interesting to remember that that christ christ came into a broken world mm -hmm. right he he came into a world filled with sin and and sin breaks things and christ experienced the consequences of that brokenness uh even before birth and yet he he comes to heal and he comes to make whole um and and so so our Christ, our Redeemer, um, does can relate can relate to our to our suffering and to the brokenness we experience in life because He did too. Um, I think it's really interesting when you look at the gifts that the wise men bring, right? Um, the the gifts of of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Um, they are gifts that rec that recognize or show that they they recognize who Christ is meant to be right the gold uh in in revel, relevance to or in relation to um his kingship uh we have the frankincense frankincense that um you know would have been used um in as incense in the holy places the old testament yeah. talks about using frankincense and so we see uh, Jesus as priest um we also see the myrrh the myrrh, which is was used for anointing oil, right, for the prophets um, of old, but also used in death, right? Um, and the so, spice. yeah, the burial spice. And so we know um, that that they knew who Jesus was supposed to be, that he was coming not only to live and to be our king and to be the priest that will sacrifice for our sins and the prophet that will tell us so myrrh is is was used in anointing oil right no yes yeah myrrh is and and it's a burial spice it, it's they they brought mary and, and joseph a, a little baby coffin it was a confession that this was the one who was going to die absolutely so so even then we see that they know who christ is they know that he is going to be our prophet priest and king that he is going to redeem us and and despite the brokenness, despite despite the 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 suffering that's to come, and this was a pronouncement of his suffering, yeah. right? This was a this was a recognition that things would not go well for him, um, and in the end, he would have to die for us. It is also a message of joy and um, and and rejoicing, right? It is also a message of promise and hope, despite the life issues that existed. Right. And, and so for us today, we have the same. Uh, we have we have the joy that our Savior came into the world to die for us sinners. Michelle Bauman is the director of Why for Life. Thank you so much for joining us this holiday season. Thank you. Happy, happy uh, holidays. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And you as well. Have a good one. Thanks. Awesome. Sorry. <laughs>